Welcome to Econ 202 Macroeconomics Chapter 6 Workout Problem Video. In this workout problem video we're going to work out six uh, problem sets. Uh, the problem sets can be found in the back of the Chapter 6 uh, chapter of the OpenStax workbook or textbook. Problem number one, forests. <clears throat> so it says that last year a small nation with abundant forests cut down $200 worth of trees. $100 of these trees were then turned into $150 worth of lumber. $100 worth of the lumber was then used to produce $250 worth of bookshelves. Assuming the country produces no other outputs and there are no other inputs, there are no other inputs used in the production of trees, lumber, and bookshelves, what is the nation's GDP? And then it goes on to say, in other words, what is the value of the final goods produced? So we're looking at this from the supply side, right? So what are, what are, what are the what is the value of the final goods produced, including trees, lumber, and bookshelves? Okay, so I'm actually not going to draw this out, but I'm going to I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to talk you through it here. And what we do, what we have to do is we have to start at the beginning of the process, and we have to see how the materials flow down from one step of the process to the next. <clears throat> right because we don't want to double count okay so we're looking for value added here <clears throat> so at the very beginning we have two hundred dollars worth of trees we see that the two hundred dollars worth of trees are going to flow downhill into lumber right so how many how much of the two hundred dollars worth of trees do we use downstream and how much of it is just trees that we're going to count as final product for the trees so we see that a hundred dollars worth of the 200 are going to flow downstream so that that means that we can go ahead and count a hundred dollars that doesn't flow downstream as a uh, part of the final product okay that's produced so we're going to go ahead out of the out of this 200 we're going to go get we're going to go ahead and count a hundred dollars worth of trees okay now the the hundred dollars worth of trees that flat flows downstream is going to go into the lumber and we see that uh, from that hundred and fifty dollars worth of lumber is created so we're gonna basically forget this hundred dollars worth of trees that went into the hundred and fifty dollars in lumber because that that is included in the lumber value now and we're gonna say okay now how much of the lumber flows downstream it's going to be a hundred dollars of the lumber is going to flow downstream so we have fifty dollars that's just lumber that is final product so we can go ahead and count fifty dollars of the final product of lumber maybe that maybe that's what some people just buy you know the final lumber that they're going to use okay and then we have two hundred and fifty dollars worth of bookshelves so and that's the final product there's nothing that we make out of bookshelves it doesn't flow down this is the this is final product here so we're able to add our hundred dollars that's a hundred up here to our hundred dollars worth of trees to fifty dollars in lumber and then we're gonna add that hundred and fifty dollars right these together to the $250 worth of bookshelf. So that's how you kind of do it. That way you don't double count. So you're working downstream, you're going to be able to do that. And so the final product that we're that GDP is going to calculate, right? Cuz this is all we do in this country. And so GDP for this country would be the 100 plus the 150 plus the 250 which equals $400. So that's problem number 1. Okay? So problem number 2 says the prime interest rate is the rate the banks charge their best customers okay so their their best their safest customers is what they're going to charge them based on the nominal interest rate so that's the interest rates in today's dollars and inflation rates given uh, in table 6.10 uh, 6.10 right uh, which is right here down here this is the table at the bottom in which of the years would it have been best to be a lender so the, the idea is you want the best time to be a lender is when the interest rate you're charging is at its highest point above inflation the 
best time to be a borrower is where the interest rate that you're being charged is either at its lowest rate compared to inflation or even below inflation. Okay, so for example, in order to do this, we have to have a hint, right? So the hint here is this. Prime interest rate minus the inflation rate equals the real interest rate. So the real interest rate really is what's going to tell us when it would be good to be a lender, when it would be good to be a borrower. Lenders love high interest rates, right? They are, they are able, that's their money, their income. So the higher the interest rate, when we use this calculation, the better. So that's the year that we're going to use to have the, for a, a lender. And the borrower, we want it to be the lowest real interest rate. So what you need to do is you need to go year by year right here. And you need to say, okay, prime interest rate minus inflation. Prime interest rate minus inflation rate. Prime interest rate minus inflation. So you need to calculate all four of these rows and find the real interest. And that will tell you the highest real interest rate is the best year to be a lender. The lowest real interest rate is the year to be the borrower. Problem number three, it's pretty similar. Okay, problem number three is pretty similar with the interest rates. And that's why we give the same hint here. But it's a little different because we, we're using different types of rates. So we, we have a mortgage interest rate, right? So we're specifically talking about long-term mortgages, maybe on real assets uh, or on, on fixed assets. So the mortgage loan, it says, is a loan that a person must uh, makes to purchase a house, right? So the table below provides a list of the mortgage interest rate being charged for several different years and the rate of inflation for each of those years. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're taking the mortgage interest rate minus the inflation rate, which gives us the real interest rate that's being charged. And we have to figure out for A, which years would it have uh, been better to be a person borrowing money from a bank to buy a home? And which years would it have been better to be a bank lending money? So this, they kind of flop this, right, from the question above. And really what it is is the A to be a borrower, you want the lowest real interest rate. And for B, to be a lender, you want the highest real interest rate. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now we're going on to problem four. In problem four, we're gonna be doing some exchange rates and some per capita. Actually, this one I think is just specifically per capita GDP that we're gonna be focusing on here as a figure so we can compare countries. So Ethiopia has a GDP of eight billion measured in US dollars. It's important that this is all measured in the same currency to compare countries, right? So we're going to, because we have to be able to do the exchange rate here and compare apples to apples. Because if we're doing Ethiopia in their currency and Costa Rica in, in their currency, it's apples and oranges. It's not going to compare, right? So we have to convert them all over. In this case, it's to US dollars so we can see and compare apples to apples. If that, Hopefully that makes sense. So GDP is 8 billion. And the population of Ethiopia is 55 million. Costa Rica has a GDP of 9 billion and a population of 4 million. So now we're supposed to calculate the per capita GDP of each country and identify which one is higher. Okay, so this is the hint here for this one. GDP divided by population equals per capita. Uh, I spelled that wrong. I'll have to get rid of my L. Per capita GDP, that's supposed to say. Okay. So per capita, not capital, per capita GDP. Okay, so, so that's gonna give it to us. So we take our, since they're all converted into US dollars, we use the 8 billion for Ethiopia, right? And divide it by the 55 million for the population. Costa Rica, same thing, 9 billion divided by the 4 million. And we figure out which one's higher. Um, Cause that's converting like to like. So each person in that country, you know, it. it the income distribution is not equal necessarily in these countries, but it's to say that each country is producing so much per per person in the country. So if uh, hopefully if the, the higher the GDP per capita, the higher the cost uh, or the higher the standard of living in that country is going to be. Okay, so here we go again. This is GDP per capita we're going to talk about, but we're going to do a, something a little different in this one. Okay, we're going to talk about comparing the same country uh, one year to uh, the same country uh, next year, right? So we're doing keeping the same country. We're going to go from year to year. 
and in this one we have Denmark and it says that Denmark had a GDP of 7 billion in 1980 and a population of 5.1 million then in 2000 it had a GDP of 160 billion and a population of 5.3 so it's asking what percentage did, did Denmark's GDP per capita rise between 1980 and 2000 so we're looking at a percent of change so in order to do this well, first we have our hint here and my again my L's on there I used I copied and pasted this one so I've got to get rid of my L there so this is per capita GDP not per capita <laughs> that's not right okay so anyways I'm not perfect but that's hopefully I'll let you let you know what that is and then uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to do the uh, the second hint right so we know how to do per capita per GDP so we're gonna do per capita GDP for 1980 and then for 2000 so you need both of those numbers and then what you do is you're going to take your newer or more recent which is two th the 2000 number per capita GDP and you're going to subtract from it the old or the less recent which is 1980 per capita GDP okay so you so you, you come up with a number there so the difference between the two and then what you do is you divide that difference by the old uh, GDP per capita uh, and that will give you your percentage change so this is per capita right here that right there is not just GDP it should be GDP uh, per capita okay okay there you go and that should give you your percent change okay so that's basically telling you uh, so we know the difference we know the change but then we take the base year or the old year per capita GDP and we say okay how much from that old year did it increase right so that's the percent change and that's how you do that one there okay now the very last one this is the last problem and in this one the Czech Republic has a GDP of 100 1,800 billion kruny and the exchange rate is 20 kruny per US dollar so for every U.S. dollar uh, to take to be equivalent, it's 20 uh, Czech Republic kruny. The Czech population is 20 million. So now what we have to do is it says, what is the GDP per capita of the U.S. Uh, or the Czech Republic expressed in U.S. dollars? So we have to first do our calculation here with the L. We're going to get rid of the L here. Okay, there we go. So per capita. So we're going to first figure out the per capita GDP of the Czech Republic okay so we know what it is it's uh, 1,800 billion uh, Karuni right divided by the population which is 200 million then now that we have the GDP per capita we're going to convert that into US dollars so we see here that uh, and let's go ahead and bring this up oh, I put per capita there too got to get rid of that capital I don't know what I was thinking I was typing too quickly and trying to get this ready okay so now we take our per capita GDP which we just calculated and we divide it by the croonies per dollar which is it should be 20 right right should be 20 20 per dollar so basically it's just the GDP per capita uh, of, the, of the Czech Republic divided by 20 and that should be that should give you the number uh, in the, the GDP per capita of the Czech Republic in US dollars so I'll just tell you at the very beginning the, the per capita capita GDP of the Czech Republic is pretty high it seems pretty high it's gonna be 90,000 Karuni and then once you divide it by that 20 by the 20 there it's gonna be a lot smaller it's only gonna be forty five hundred dollars is what it's going to be converted into so that's going to be uh the workout problem video for chapter six i hope you enjoyed it sorry for the errors there i corrected all the errors that uh, i saw there hopefully to help you along and we will uh do our best to uh not have any errors in future videos thanks bye